And we're live. Hello. <laughs> hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome, Kim, and welcome, Debbie. Yay. And it's Ladies Night here. We're women reading on women to empower women. Yay. <laughs> it's the only place to be. I mean, really. Really. It's the only place to be. It really is. <laughs> So, yeah, it's pretty chilly up here in the north. I don't know how you guys are doing where you are. A little it's bit cold here. Here. Yeah. cold here. Cold here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's chilly. For California, it's chilly. Probably not, not chilly. <laughs> yeah, when you say chilly, we say... Uh, no. Yeah, probably like in the, in the late 50s, early 60s. It was a great time That's for music. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I'm like, wait, this is, is this, are we talking music here? <laughs> if you're new to the show, we rotate hosting. We go, uh, we hop onto each other's channels as we rotate the show each Monday night. And we select three women for women's issues or events, et cetera. And we read on them to see what we get. And we each pick something. So it's kind of fun to see how, how it all comes together when we're reading on this. And we have three wonderful choices tonight. Welcome aboard, get ready to learn, get ready to love. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and I believe, Kim, you're up first with your selection. Oh, really? Okay. Well, mine came from a viewer who actually had a, <laughs> I had a, a uh, appointment with, and at the end she said, can I give you some suggestions for ladies night? <laughs> so I said, sure. I love that. I love that. So um, her name is Lisa. And so um, one of her, her um, requests was um, Catherine Weldon. Um, she was actually born by a different name, uh, Suze, Susanna Carolina uh, Faish. Um, she was born on December 4th, 1844 in uh, Switzerland. And her father was a career Swiss mercenary military officer um, serving in the Swiss regiment in France. Her mother was Anna Maria Bar Barbara. Um, and she was a member of the Fre of the Freish family, who was part of the Swiss nobility. Um, so she arrived in. Her, she and her mother came to uh, America in 1852. They settled in Brooklyn, and that year her mother was remarried to an exiled German revolutionary and physician. Um, he ran a medical practice in Brooklyn, and in 1866, Susanna Carolina Freisch was was married in Brooklyn to Dr. Bernard Claudius um, Schlatter, a physician and fellow Swiss. And her marriage uh, remained childish; she didn't have any children with him, um, and it was a very unhappy marriage. So in June, she ran away and <laughs> with a married man. And um, his name was Christopher J. Stevenson. And they lived together briefly and had a romantic relationship, but it did not last as he did return to his wife many years later. And Carol Carolyn was um, compelled to return to Brooklyn and live with her mother and stepfather. And um, her estranged husband, Bernard Slatter, um, filed for divorce, and that was granted in, in 1883. Um, Weldon pursued her interest in art after her divorce from her husband, and uh, she'd also been abandoned by her lover. That didn't that didn't work out either. So. Um, after that, she became very interested in Native American, uh, in the Native American community and Na Native American uh, causes. And upon the death of her mother, she received a, quite a good inheritance. And so she could kind of just pursue her interests. And um, 
sometime thereafter, I'm not sure exactly when, she changed her name to Carolyn Weldon, which is what you're seeing there. Um, it was presumably to put her past behind her, but they're not really sure exactly why she did it. Um, to me, it kind of seems like a, a thing, just trying to find uh, find something to kind of turn turn the page on, on a new life that she was having um, in these new interests. And um, in the summer of 1889, Carolyn Weldon traveled to Dakota Territory to fulfill her dream to live among the Sioux, the, the tribe. Um, she had joined the uh, NIDA, N-I-D-A, the National Indian Defense Association, and she befriended Sitting Bull, um, the leader of the, tradi the traditionalist action among the Sioux acting as his secretary, his interpreter, and his advocate. And she also painted him. She made several paintings of him. Um, after she had moved with her son, with her young son to live at Sitting Bull's compound on the Grand River at Standing Rock, we know Standing Rock, um, Standing Rock Indian Reservation, her, uh, Confrontations and open defiance of Indian agent James Laughlin did not endear her to the general public. <laughs> and um, he made it, uh, he, he kind of initiated a smear campaign against her. Um, it resulted in her being hated, absolutely hated and reviled among the white community. Um, they saw her as kind of a traitor of some, of some kind, and she was vilified in the national press. Now, in the summer of 1890, the ghost dance movement started, and I had never heard of this before, but it was a ceremony incorporated into numerous Native American tribes at the time, and it was meant to call up the spirits of the dead to reunite with the spirits of the living to fight on their behalf and to end this American kind of um, taking over the land or America is taking over the land. And it swept through the Indian reservations of the West. And she, um, Carolyn, denounced it wholeheartedly and said that it would give the uh, government an excuse to bring harm upon Sitting Bull. And so she uh, denounced it and, and left um, because she, he, he did not denounce it. He, he, was, he was all for it. So, um, so um, she thought this would uh, kind of give, the, give an excuse for the military to come in. And um, it actually did. Sitting Bull um, turned against her, and upon uh, and her and her son fell ill in November. She decided to leave. Um, the subsequent events of Sitting Bull's murder and the Wounded Knee massacre the following December proved her right, um, adding to her sense of futility and failure. Her son also passed away that year. Um, so she had been on her way home to Kansas City and she lived there um, briefly with her nephew and then she um, went back home to Brooklyn and she kind of after that disappeared kind of into obscurity. She kind of just lived a quiet existence and um, she did paint four portraits of Sitting Bull during her time with him and two of them are known to have survived. Um, one is in uh, the Dakota Historical Society and one is in the Historic Arkansas Museum at Little Rock. And she actually died alone in her apartment in the weirdest way possible. It's just so weird. She died at 76 on March 15th, 1921 at the age of 76. And the cause of death was an accident was accidental third degree burns to her face and body caused by the a fire that was sparked by a candle. And she was laid to rest in the family plot at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York. But 
what a weird and interesting life, right? Yeah. The, and she kind of, uh, something I just thought was that, you know, even though she came from this kind of upper class kind of nobility background, she really did follow her, her heart. She followed where her heart went. And she was, um, I think she was all in and very committed until this thing with ghost dancing came up, which I thought was just so strange, such a strange way to have um, for this to be the thing that kind of mm -hmm. cut her off, you know, just her, made her think, you know, I don't, I don't want to be part of this anymore because I think it's going to end badly. I don't like this. And, um, and uh, any excuse that the government would need to come in or, you know, think, you know, whatever, make up whatever they, they wanted to, to come in and, and, um, you know, cause more trouble. She just thought so that's what would happen. And that is what happened. Um, but yeah. So what do you guys think? Interesting lady, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, get right in there with sitting bowl. I mean, that wouldn't be something very easy to do. So she must have had proven herself and gained that trust to be there with him. It's a very, um, that would have been a great honor to be yeah. right. there with him. Right. And I think, I, I mean, I think one thing was she proved herself very, um, you know, to be, be able to be the translator and the secretary. I think she was very useful. You know, she, she kind of found where she would, she would be useful in this way. But I think, right, she also had a real commitment to the Sioux tribe and, had been very, was very, um, it sounds like knowledgeable about a lot of the legal things. And so, you know, she got involved with a lot of the legal stuff that they were going through and tried to help that way. Um, but yeah. Caroline. Connie says Sitting Bull would never have let his portrait be painted but I think they do have her paintings of him. Yeah, she apparently did four and they have two of them still. Those are the, the only two that, that you know, survived. I, I don't know that he wouldn't, I know there was a thing about photography. They didn't like photography. I don't know about portraits because there are portraits of other, I mean, I, but he has, a, he has a pictures too. So I don't know why that would be well, he was in he's in two of these pictures, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say, he did have his picture taken. So I, I don't know why that would be unrealistic. I don't so know. On the, but, on the brown picture on the middle and the top, he's second from the right, and mm -hmm. she's beside him. Her face is kind of cut off. Right, mm -hmm. right. The black and white photo, she's the, the one, the lady that's sort of tall there, at the, mm -hmm. and he's right mm -hmm. beside her. Right. Um, but yes, there's two, um, I think there are, yeah, there are two, two portraits in two different locations. Um, one is held by the North Dakota Historical Society in Bismarck, North Dakota, and the other is in the Arkansas Museum in Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it sounds like that was one of her first loves was art. So I think that that, you know. Um, yeah, that's what she loved to do. And maybe he trusted her, you know. Um. Oh, freedom. Freedom was a very important thing for her. She wanted, not for her, for them. Mm -hmm. For the um, Native Americans. She wanted them to have their freedom be able to do what they needed and live as they wanted to live. Really brave of her at that time to lend herself to that cause. I, She must have met a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of uh, blowback from her community and her peers. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, when they say a smear campaign, I mean, we know that what that looks like. Yeah. now but i i would imagine her also being again being a woman um i feel like um even though what i read didn't make much of it she's making me feel like leaving 
the decision to leave the tribe and to kind of go away was an extremely heart-wrenching decision. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it was kind of glossed over, like she uh, and she decided to leave, but she she's saying it was very um, after a lot of soul searching and and trying to, I guess. Um, convince them to do things differently or to think about things differently. Um, but I feel like she was, um, I almost feel like she was outvoted in a way. Um, so I don't know what, what that means, but I, but it does feel like it was very, very difficult and heart wrenching decision to leave. Yeah. She's giving me the sense of um, a life of, a lot of heartbreak, like one thing after yeah. another, um, the darkness of the world around her. It just, she, it's a lot of doom and gloom. Um, mm -hmm. I don't sense that she had a lot of joy. Um, kind of a solemn. Yeah. A yeah. very mm -hmm. solemn. She comes in very like that. Yeah. Um, she did find, um, I feel anxiety around her too. So I feel like her, her when, but she, when she's painting or drawing, it was like a, an escape for her to kind of center herself where she is. She said she's correlates it with like taking medicine for being, if you're anxious, you know what I mean? Like that was her medicine mm -hmm. was that the art, the painting. Um, she also felt um, her after uh some of the heartbreaks in her life, her life was what a waste. And, um, and she was passionate about this, it seems. And so she um, ingest the injustices and, and, and like that for her own life too, like all the doors shut on your face and, and so forth as a woman and, and um, not being able just to, to be free to do. And so anyways, all of that combined is what um, put her there to, to, to do what she did there. Um, mm -hmm. I also heard uh, in, in regards to the smear campaign, mm -hmm. um, that was, that was not easy. Um, she says it's interesting. It was like interesting for her to hear that being read. And, and it was just a few words. But to her, it was so much bigger. Uh, you know, you can take and, and, and spin these tales and how people just <laughs> grab onto these tales and make them truth. And it was scary. She said, it's scary because you can tell someone these words that aren't true. They take it as truth and your life is changed. It, it, she said, it, it's like, it's like a big thing. Uh, it was big to her, I guess. I mean, obviously. Um, <laughs> so she pointed that out. She also, uh, this wasn't her, uh, but when you were talking about, the ghost dancing yeah and how they were going to call in this the spirits of the ancestors to come in and fight i heard loud and clear some are still fighting mm. so there were oh. some still here fighting <sighs> and i i'm like i just went well i mean it just almost blew me over so, <laughs> anyways well, oh, I got chills with that, Debbie. So that there's something to that. I felt right that there was a lot that they were calling to come and help. Like, what, what I mean is, there's there's a lot more bodies than we know about. There's a lot more um, Native Americans that were killed and than we know of, mm -hmm. right? That we're told of or that we know of. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was a lot mm -hmm. that they were calling, and I also felt. She was physically ill when she found out um, he got killed. Like mm. I, I see her doubled over physically ill, mm. you know, the whole thing. 
Um, Cause she, even though she left, she still loved him in that role that they, their bond they had some type of bond that they had it made her physically ill. And I also get higher knowledge, understanding. I believe she was called, you know, to go there, like every to go and help. It was just a, a higher calling. And like you said, Debbie, like, um, I almost feel like she felt like, did she waste her life in the beginning part of her life? Right. She felt now, like, what a waste. What, what am I doing here? Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's because when you said, it, I'm like, this, I got makeup for lost time. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that meant. As soon as you said that, I'm like, oh my God. Like, so she wanted to have purpose. You know, if she grew up with money and all of that, that's fine. But I think she, maybe she felt that was a waste or chasing married men or whatever she, right. you know, how right. she judged her past. Um, she's going to make up for lost time and I'm going to do something really profound. I mean, how many, how many people at that time were doing what she did? None of them. <laughs> Shame on them all. They should have, but. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and to be so determined too to kind of go and live with the tribe, find out, you know, to yeah. actually, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people at the time were kind of interested or who are these people or what's going on and that they're involved in even the causes, but to actually go and live with the tribe and and get to know them so so personally, it's it. You're right. It takes such courage on her part to do that. Um, more because of uh, the white culture, not, yeah. not the right. Natives. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. It was absolutely. Not, not the natives. The Native Americans. They were happy. We're not happy, but you know, they're they're not. They're not exclusive, right. like right. Like white people. And she said too that like, when, when she left, it was like being between two worlds. She really didn't have a anything to go to come back to she yeah. felt in between the tribe and, and in between the white culture because she was she didn't really really feel like she had a place after she left yeah yeah yeah, yeah. someone's asking her birthday so she was born december 4th 1844 yeah she passed away march 15th 1921 so, you know, we know about the 1800s, hard to do anything as a woman, yeah. let alone stand up for, a, you know, an entire group of people that were being treated horribly. But wow. she did. But yeah. she did, didn't she? She did. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. What can we do? Right? This is why we do this show is to see uh, what someone else has done and what can we do. One person can One make person. a difference. One woman. One woman. <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> yeah. So what exactly. can we do? You know? And these people, when they're doing it, like Caroline, they don't know that they're going to be a historic figure. They don't know that they'll be in the history books. You know, mm -hmm. they're doing it because it feels right. And it's a calling. Right. And it's the right thing to do. And that's what makes a hero. That's what makes someone we should know about from history. Ooh. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. So, um, yeah. She, the thing I, I feel like she's bringing here, too, is like she didn't know all the roles, you know, of, but she, she went in, um, you know, wanting to. And um, and wanting to learn and and be able to communicate and do and do this, she wants us to know something about that. That we, I feel like we always want to have everything. Before, okay, before we talk to you, um, uh, and I can say this because I, I can. Before I talk to that gay person, I need to know if I'm saying the right thing. I don't want to not say the right thing. What if I don't say the right thing? And then you end up not talking to that person and you shut that door that it's closed and then nothing is shifted, right? So she's saying, don't be afraid. Just say, I, I, I really want to talk to you and I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And um, so just be open about it. 
I think Kim, you talk a lot about this too. It's like communicate where you're yeah. at in the in the process, um, but don't not be in the process because you're afraid. That's yeah. what he's trying to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Our fear stops um, you from fear stops us from expansion. She said. And so she, Caroline, was working, did you say, as a translator or? Um, mm -hmm. Tra a secretary, a translator, wow. um, and kind of a, became like a confidant, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. What a unique dynamic relationship. Wouldn't you like to be a fly in the wall between those two? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing lady. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Car thank Caroline. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, thank you. What a strong lady. All right, well, I guess I am up next, and my selection is Naki, Nakiat Dramani Sam. Mm. And this young girl is still here with us, so this is a current person we are reading on. And she's 10 years old, 10 years old, folks. <laughs> she is a young female poet and child prodigy born in a small village in Ghana. She's 10 years old. And on Friday, just a few days ago, she spoke during a UN session with hundreds of delegates in the room. With her soft voice and direct message, it cut through the dryness of the proceedings and a reminder to ne negotiators and everybody listening that decisions made at climate talks can have a direct impact on people. Talking about suffering in Ghana due to flooding, she held up a sign that said payment overdue. I put a simple question on the table, she said. When can you pay us back because payment is overdue? What she was talking about is a thorny issue that's taken center stage over the last few weeks of negotiations at the UN summit called COP27. Many developing nations are insisting that rich countries which have contributed the most to clim climate change because of greenhouse emissions and them being so high that they compensate other countries for the damage. Because it's, you know, these other countries aren't causing the pollution and the climate change, right? So talking about how scientists say the world has less than a decade left to continue polluting at today's rates before the effects of global warming get much worse, she said, have a heart and do the math. It's an emergency. Mm. When she finished speaking, she received a standing ovation. I just want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. In an interview afterwards, she said that her environmentalism began a few years ago with a love for trees. She wrote a children's book about trees in Ghana and to date, she has planted over a hundred trees. Mm. Children were the best people to deliver such messages, she said, because they would be around to suffer the consequences of a warming planet. So, wow. I just, you know, wrap your head around that in a 10 year old. Fell in love Ten with trees, years old. write the book. Poetry, speaking in front of these delegates at a huge thing and saying that children need a voice because we will be the ones to suffer the consequences of the planet. So her bio reads, climate change ambassador, global young peace ambassador, and winner of talented kids season number 10, and a <laughs> wit poet and influencer. <clears throat> she speaks and recites poems in three different languages, and it is rare for such a young child to have this much talent and grace, but she possesses it. And look at the picture of her up in the right-hand corner. It's ageless. She's yeah. ageless in that picture. Yeah. Um, um, 
So this tiny little girl, this little 10 year old girl is a behemoth. She is a mighty Titan. She is incredible. So she's got lots of talent. She was on a kid's show. She's written poetry since she was a kid or she's a kid. So she was she a kid. A <laughs> she on the bottom kid. right there. She, I believe she's winning um, for her poetry. Uh, and that's her book. She's holding in the middle picture there and mm -hmm. payment overdue. So really calling out, we'll say first world countries for the damage that they're causing to the environment, which we all know, and they're not stopping. Mm -hmm. And she got a standing ovation. I mean, if that doesn't get you all tingly, I don't know. <laughs> no, like, wow. So I wanted to, to look at her and, and, you know, do we, is there someone in the past that she's now, right? Was her soul someone in the past? Maybe that's something we can look at that, you know, someone we would recognize. Um, and where's she going? What's in the future for her? So I was just curious if we could just look at our um, our young warrior here who's going to lead the charge for us in the future. For women, for the earth. I mean, she's just amazing. The name of her book is, I think it's A Tree's Life. Trees for Life? Let's see. It's called... Trees for Life. Yes, you're right. Trees for Life. And she challenges all the children. This will make me cry. I can hardly say it. Mm -hmm. Challenge all the children of the world to plant a tree. Isn't that mm -hmm. the most beautiful thing you've ever heard? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. What's and how do you say her name again? Nakayat. Nakiat, I think. Na I, I don't know how to say everything properly. But. So our our warrior little <laughs> I just love her. I just love her. <laughs> okay. okay. And I think it's interesting because I think she was something inspired her to um I feel like she was inspired to go to kind of go the money route because that gets the attention of first world countries, right? You start talking about money and their, their ears perk up. So I feel like that was an inspired move on her part. Um, yeah. It makes think me think of Greta Thunberg as well. Yes, yeah. Young, young ladies that just are. And it's very exciting. Good. I get so excited for it for, to see yeah. these these young girls who will be young women soon and what they're doing. Um, I just ask in a past yeah. life, I'm getting, she was a Palladian in a past life, which would make sense, you know, Oh, um, higher thinking, right. Mm -hmm. Caring about environment and things like that. I didn't, I didn't catch a human, Interesting. Uh, but you guys might, if you see, you, I don't know. Yeah. You know, so when I, when I connect in with her, I, I don't, I'm not getting a little, you know, a little girl. It's so weird. I, I'm connecting and, it, you know, maybe it's just, you know, soul, but I'm thinking I'm going to connect in with a little 10 year old, you know, and you feel their little spirit. Her spirit's not little. Her, that, that soul that it's, it's not little. Like she's, um, uh, so that I thought that was interesting. Like a sage, it, an old sage. Almost. Yeah, like a very, very much so. I'm seeing a lot of past lives here. Mm. Uh, little snippets. I'm being shown little snippets nice. of these lives. Um, but all, and I think, and I'm trying to hone in on the little snippets, but it was always something about, um, it, it's kind of the same story, but different, you know, in each lifetime. Um, in regards to uh, bringing um, awareness and advancement. Um, not always uh, accept it, you know what I mean? Uh, some of the snippets, she's being like chased out, you know, because um, it, it's the, whatever she's doing is not accepted. Um, 
not always a woman, obviously, you know, obviously, but, um, but the same theme, I feel like the same theme here, uh, bringing it in, in advancement. Um, I'm, I wanted to know if she, uh, anybody specific, but I'm not getting anybody specific. Yeah, I didn't get a name of anyone like famous, like we would know, like we would know, mm -hmm. I, you know, like Joan of Arc or something. But I couldn't. I'm really interested in her uh, attraction to trees. Like that's I was just that's say huge. That. <laughs> yeah, that for her to fall in love with mm -hmm. trees, that is higher knowledge, like right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That the see I, that and that's like it's funny because when you said about Palladians, I was getting something about like elementals, like she had a Ooh. okay, mm -hmm. she has some kind of something I can't put my finger on it, but it's something with the elementals that she, I feel like she was a part of, and it feels like for a long time, mm -hmm. and then like now you're here. Yeah. So I don't, I, um, and of course, you know, we don't have all, all the knowledge here, no, but, we don't. but it does feel like it's, mm -hmm. it feels like you were this, like you were this for a lot, you were part of this for a long time and now you're coming here. Mm -hmm. And so seeing snippets, that makes sense to me, Debbie, because mm -hmm. it feels like, you know, not little lifetimes, but almost lifetimes committed to certain you know very specific things and i and and um and i feel like this is the same it's a very she's here for a, a very very specific reasons and there she's going to do this here and that's her job <laughs> it's like this is do not be distracted this is what you're doing and i feel like that's one reason she's so young doing this um she was so clear on what she was here to do um a lot of us, it, it takes us many years to kind of to figure you know, it out, walk yeah. through and kind of figure out, oh, yeah, this is why I'm here. I feel like for her, it was just like this. You're, you were here for a long time doing this, and now you're here. Uh, the golden ratio, beauty, nature, patterns. I feel like she has been around a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, always working on the right for a species or an environment, whatever it is, in whatever form she was in. And maybe that's why she's so sharp this time. Cause you know, so many times doing it when she came in this time, she didn't have to wait too many years to figure it out. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> right. And then, you know, what do we see coming for her in, in this particular life? Um, do you, do you feel anything like her, you know, sitting on the UN literally in the, in the future or an, an environmental lawyer or something. Do you sense anything for her coming? You know, um, I think this is metaphorical, but I, I guess I, but it keeps coming. So I have to say it out loud because I tried to not. <laughs> and, um, but I keep hearing her say the only, the only lifetime, the only time I lived a long life was when I was a tree. Oh, you are making me freak out. Cause I was, yeah. I was a tree before <laughs> I felt that. I don't know. I, I, okay. Yeah. I think, I, you know, not, I, I think believe absolutely right. Debbie. I believe souls can be a tree or a okay. flower. Or so I, I, I have no clue on any of that. So, but she, it, she kept saying it over and over again. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> she a tree in a past life. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Kim, she's showing me the elementals around her so much. Okay. In that, in that, yeah. I feel they're around her now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like she's protected. I yeah. somebody else in the chat said I feel like she's protected, and I and I heard elementals again, so I felt yeah. like she's being protected. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent. Yep. And in her future, I see more learning, 
more mm -hmm. ideas. You see her studying with those wonderful ideas. And then we also have strength, power. Oh, love that. Look at that. Yeah. So she's going mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. I feel like too, she may write a, um, to me, it feels like a book that is very, um, to me, it seems like it seems like a, a book book that not not a kids book, but a book a regular book that is kind of um, seen as a some kind of breakthrough for um, for uh, environmentalism. There's something something about that. She's going to write something that is it almost feels like a like the handbook to environmentalism or something like that. It, it, it I feel oh yeah, I'm getting chills. It feels if, I think it's like the young like a young person's handbook to the something like that to to environmentalism or to be a young activist or something like that but it has to do with the environment and getting young people to to get involved and in what they can do and that kind of stuff um and she's to me that write, doesn't feel very far off it feels like maybe a few years she's going to learn more languages too i just heard that she knows three languages already at the age of 10 so we can look because she wants to she wants to talk to everyone. She wants to be able to talk to everyone, you know, when she goes traveling and doing lectures or talking to kids in school or universities. This is what I see coming for her. So. Right. Wow. <laughs> when I was 10, I was riding my skateboard. <laughs> and exactly. yeah, I was roller skating. <laughs> watching cartoons. <laughs> She's really taking me. I'm, I'm, I'm really tripping out here, you guys. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's really taking me into the depths of these trees. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. But literally, she's, she's trying to explain the networks of trees and how everything is connected. Life. There's a whole other world that we don't even know happening um, in the, under uh, under the ground. So we're dumb as nails and we have brown, you know what I mean? We stomp on the ground and we go and we think that's it. And we dig up the ground and plant, plant. She said, there's a whole network underneath there. And so it's like a whole nother world right there. It's kind of like, she's kind of showing me like when you, um, like when we talk about this, the other side and, and I always say, well, the other side's right here. We just don't have the vibration to see it. And she said, it's the right. same with the trees and the networks. We just don't have the vibration to see this whole world going on right with us. And, and, and so she's showing me this network and she said, it's very similar to how, uh, how we do um, global networking uh, internet and, and like that, but it's like, trees uh, and you know like it's all i'm my mind is going to go because <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the roots connecting under the ground yeah yeah I, yeah i was getting the word patterns that there are pa there are patterns to everything yeah. um and then you said and then you were saying net and network same same, same same yeah kind of thing. Yeah. yeah it was just fascinating yes yeah <laughs> I really, I really need to see what comes for her. Yeah. So she's one we will keep our eye on and be very grateful that we have her here on the planet helping us at this time. So thank you, Nikiet. Yes. And you are, you have all of our energy with you to champion yeah. you on. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And there will be more. There are, there, there are more coming. Mm -hmm. I it that. really yeah. encourages more when you, you know, yeah. girls yeah. or kids to come forward. Yeah. Absolutely. She wow. is a goddess, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> mm. The goddess of trees. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Of the trees. Oh, sweetheart. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Debbie, okay. you are next. I am next. Okay, so um, I am hoping we can um, talk to Octavia Butler. Um, she was born in 1947 and passed in 2006. Um, 
she, um, who was Octavia Butler? Uh, she studied at several universities and began, she was a writer. Um, and uh, she began her uh, writing career in the 1970s. Her books blended elements of science fiction and African-American spiritualism. Her first novel, Pattern Master, 1976, would ultimately become one of the installments in a four volume series. Um, Butler went on to write several other novels, including Kindred in 1979, as well as Parable of the Sower in 1993 and Parable of the Talons in 1998. Of the Parable series, she continued to write and publish until her death um, in 2006. Um, so early life, uh, uh, Octa Octavia uh, was born in Pasadena, California on June 22nd, 1947. That's my, my daughter was not born in 1947, but she was born on June 22nd. <laughs> um, later, breaking new ground as a woman and an African-American in the realm of science fiction. Um, Butler thrived in the genre of typically dominated by white males. She lost her father at a young age and was raised by her widowed mother. Uh, and so to support the family, her mother worked as a maid. As a child, Butler was known for her extreme, painful, they called it painful shyness, oh. um, and, she, and her impressive height. <laughs> she was really tall, and she also was dyslexic, but she was extremely bullied and tormented daily because of this. Yeah. Um, but she didn't let any of these challenges deter her from developing the love of, uh, didn't let the dyslexic challenge de from developing the love of books. In fact, she dove into the books because of the bullying. She didn't have any friends. She, it made her feel like to herself that she would, oh, okay, I'm ugly, I'm disgusting, and I need to just be my myself. So that's kind of how she felt. So she dove into books. And, um, and so she started creating her own stories early on. She decided to make writing her life's work around the age of 10. <laughs> Magic age. <laughs> Magic age. She later earned an associate degree from Pasadena City College. Um, Butler also studied her craft with Harlan Elson at the Clarion Fictions Writers Workshop. Okay, so I want to talk about the books a little bit because it, it gives you an understanding of why maybe I went this direction. <laughs> um, to make ends meet, Butler took all sorts of jobs while maintaining a strict writing schedule. She was known to work for several hours very early in the morning each day in writing. In, in 1976, uh, she published her first novel, Pattern Master. This book would ultimately become part of an ongoing storyline about a group of people with telepathic powers called Patternists. Oh. Mm -hmm. The other related titles were Mind of My Mind, Wild Seed, and Clay's Ark. Um, Butler's publishing house would later group the works as Patternist series, the Patternist series. Um, presenting them in a different reading order from when they were chronically published. Interesting. In 1979, uh, had a career, uh, Butler had a career breakthrough with Kindred. The novel tells a story of an African-American woman who travels back in time to save a white slave owner, her own ancestor. I mean, do, do you see where I'm going with all this? Oh, in part, Butler drew some inspiration from her mother's work. I didn't, I, I didn't like seeing her go through the back doors when she went to work. She had to go in the back entrance, not the front door. She once said, according to, she once told the New York Times, if my mother hadn't put up with all those humiliations, I wouldn't have eaten very well or lived very comfortably. So I wanted to write a novel that would make others feel the history 
the pain and fear of black people the, that black people have had to live through in order to endure. For some writers, science fiction serves as a means to delve into fantasy, but for Butler, it largely served as a vehicle to address issues facing humanity. It was the passionate earnest in the human experience that imbued her work with a certain depth of complexity. In the mid 1980s, Butler began to receive critical recognition for her work. She won the um, 1984 Best Short Story Hugo Award for Speech Sounds. That same year, the novelette Blood Child won a Nebula Award and later the Hugo as well. In the late 1980s, Butler published Xenogenesis Trilogy, Dawn, 1987, Adult, Rights, 1988, and Imago, 1989. This series of books explores issues of genetics and race. To ensure their mutual survival, humans reproduce with aliens known as Oenakali. Oenakali. Um, Butler received much praise for this tri trilogy. She went on to write the two installment Parable series, Parable of the Stories and Parable of the Talents. Um, Butler received a genius grant from um, MacArthur Foundation, becoming the first science fiction writer to do so, which allowed her to buy a house for her mother and herself. Okay, so in the final years, um, Butler abandoned her native of California to move to Seattle. Uh, she was a perfectionist with her work and spent several years grappling with writer's block. Um, her efforts were hampered by her ill health um, and uh, her blood pressure medicine, medicine that she took. After starting uh, and discarding numerous projects, Butler wrote the last novel, Fledgling in 2005, which was an innovative take on the con concept of vampires in family structures, <laughs> and later being one of the works, the pre being one of her works' prevailing themes. Mm. Yeah. So on February 2006, Butler died, um, and they believe a, a, a stroke. Mm. Um, either she tripped on the side. <coughs> there, they don't know. What came first? Did she have a stroke and then trip on the sidewalk and fall and, and get head injury? Or did she, you know, so it's kind of, they weren't sure about that, but that's how she passed. Um, uh, so <clears throat> that is a little about her. Now, her series on um, the aliens and how they, you know, they explore issues of genetics and race. It, it came about because of the hate people have. And I, I thought after um, Saturday night's events of uh, the, the hate crime that happened here, the, where they, um, I thought that was, I, I didn't think this was a mistake that I had chosen her. And, um, because in this book, she it, she's really trying to figure out how to move uh, the human race from our our uh, violent response to things and um, and hate and um, e exclusiveness and 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 like um, all this stuff. And she came up with the, this this um, science fiction book on. Mm -hmm how to do that. And so I thought that was very interesting. So I would love to um, talk to her a little more, but um, yeah, that is Octavia. There she is. Uh, in our chat, um, Dawn said she got to uh, interview her. Oh, Dawn. That's awesome. Wow, how cool. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. 
So the first thing, so the first thing, so just my little notebook, you can see the first thing I got for her. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom. I, and I don't know why I made that thing. Maybe it's something in her book, but I put psychic visions. Oh. That's the first thing I got with her. So she, wow. so her stories came from her. She had psychic visions and um, yeah, I just got chills with that. So I, and I feel like even some of the things she talks about, with aliens about other planets and stuff there there's truth to it there's there's or truth coming about it or there's something I, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar feel. with what she wrote but that's that's what i'm getting so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's something yeah. about this there's yeah. something about this and so now i have to read those books but yeah um yeah. so chris i think i think yeah i think she yeah. did um tap into the possible outcomes if we don't as we try to it's a, how to live without violence and hate of one another we got to pull it together guys she's a very deep soul deep thinker uh, i think she's an empath feels like she can sense Sense others. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's hilarious, actually. Um, <laughs> how funny, because I was expecting a real shy little shy. She's like, I'm flying in the stars now, guys. Flying, <laughs> flying in the stars. Oh. she's very, a very kind person and she feels like she there was nothing in her that was hateful or uh could under could even kind of understand where that like violence come that where that part of people comes from it's almost like she didn't understand it at all it did not she could not and i i feel like some of the the stories that she wrote were trying to figure it out, trying to kind of almost like dissect it in a way so that she, she could figure it out because it really was a mystery for her. I feel like she was, like I said, a very well, kind person. Well, she extreme empath. Yeah. 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 That really makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Andrea is getting some answers, man. Yeah, I was wondering if she answers. I was asking if she ever had contact with extraterrestrials, but I get a no. I was kind of hoping she got a little down from somebody. Well, that she was aware of, right? <laughs> yeah, that is a very true. Very true. So, say, ask her now that she's on the other side. Can she tell? Can she see if she had contact? I, as soon as I said astral plane, I got a yes. So this would have been like she wouldn't have seen something in her waking state. It would have been she was getting that information on another plane. Like right, sleeping. right. Okay, so like psychic or yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So. I think she's hanging out with all kinds of extraterrestrials. <laughs> you know what? It's like, I've been thinking about you guys and writing about you. And now you're here. And I'm to you. <laughs> it's like my family. She's like, I'm home. It's my family. Yeah. yeah. I'm home. Mm -hmm. Aww. Yeah. What a mm -hmm. joy. It, it seems to me that they've been... Um, I, now, I haven't read her books or anything, so I don't know. But and so those of you who might have read her books, it it, it feels like they they it's almost like um, there's already been a little shift of this going on a little bit of this. Uh, I feel like they've already kind of started. I, I have no context for this or words, guys. So <laughs> patience, patience, patience. They've already started to do the little uh putting it into our DNA to uh, shifting out of that, that violent mindset, uh, how mm -hmm. we are, you know, 
I, I feel like they already started doing that. Like, does anybody know anything about this? I don't know. That's what I'm, she's saying they already started it. I don't, but I'm all for it. <laughs> do whatever you have to do. Whatever you're going to do. I'm getting a yes. So whatever you're, okay. you're thinking so is. Whatever my yeah. scrambled words are saying. Uh, yeah. So I feel like they've already started that shifting in our DNA. DNA. Uh, so whatever uh -huh. they're doing as far as putting their DNA. Right. As part of it or how are they, Again. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chris says yes. Okay, thank a you. Switch. Chris. Switch. Chris knows what I'm saying. I don't even know what I'm a saying. switch is going on in our DNA or something to okay. help activate our, you know, so we can get higher, higher understanding. I just want us not to be violent and hate each other. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, right, right. Let's, let's get us there first before we start thinking we're going to fly around and ten D or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she's really i love her energy i really it'd be really nice to sit down and you know have dinner and talk or something and laugh with her and you know just pick her brain like at the time you know how she saw all of this and how she put it together she's really very her energy centers right here you know like she's very grounded it's very calming energy i feel off of her mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, yeah. she said she would have lived longer if she understood her empathic abilities earlier. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think um, that was part of her retreating too. It wasn't just her shyness. It's also when you can feel a lot of things, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you might retreat into the room and just read a book. But she is like, you can see how I get, I got a little animated as soon as I, t she came in. That's her, yeah. you guys. That, that's her energy. Did she win any awards? Because I feel like she was supposed to. Yeah. Well, lots of awards. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so she's talking about time travel with me, but okay. she's saying that she, that this is um, actually coming. She said, it's like a, it's not how we think. We think of ourselves as like going, you know, go, going into another time as ourselves. But she's saying it's like a simulation that's coming. And she said, it will be, it will be what, um, it, it will be like what we think of as, it will be almost like real time traveling it will be um but she's saying it's coming it's it's because oh. she's saying it's upon us so but she's but she's saying it's coming and it will be like a simulation that will be so real that it's, it's yeah like time oh my gosh i can i i when you say it I, she's literally telling <laughs> me this working how oh, it will work wow yeah because she's saying a lot of people have seen this you know that it's not just like something oh everybody talks about time traveling that it's actually a thing that's going to come that's going to happen that's good that people are have been picking up on for eons but she's like it's upon us and this is yeah it's going to be so such a real simulation it is like time traveling wow. um all and she's saying like all all like senses will be involved it won't just be like seeing something it'll be hearing seeing smelling tasting it'll be really um wow. but yeah yay well how healing will that be that it, that's awesome yeah. you can really do a lot of healing work with that that's what i was hearing when you were saying that that how mm -hmm. the healing work that could happen with that type of assimilation wow she's really enjoying where she is right now oh yeah, yeah. i think that's the animation i'm feeling yeah she is still alive yeah yeah. I don't get the feeling that she's coming oh, that she's coming back. But I get the feeling like like you said, I think she's very happy and content where she is. I think that her life here was very, very hard. Um uh, it was. E emotionally, like you said, kind of emotionally and and even physically. I feel like physically mm -hmm. it was very challenging. 
Well, um, she died at 58. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and she was on uh she was on high a blood pressure medicine. Okay. So yeah, that's it almost it almost feels like I never got used to like being here. It was always yeah. weird. Yeah. I couldn't get I couldn't like get in my body. I couldn't I couldn't like get used to being physical. It was too weird. It's, well, oh, Kim, <laughs> this is weird, you guys. I just literally when I was when you were saying that, mm -hmm. I was she was talking to you through me, saying yes, yeah. That was not me. How oh, weird. <laughs> that was weird. That is so weird because yeah, I'm getting so dizzy right now. That's yeah, usually my sign. This like, is like it's, really it's high. A lot of energy. This is a lot of vibrations going on here. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting dizzy too. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, I'm getting a female animal mm. with regards to her. It's not her spirit. Maybe is she an animal now? Oh, she's taking some kind. I guess it's an animal form over mm. there. Because mm. oh. I could feel it right here. I'm like, what is this? I, <laughs> is, is it a, it's a feline. It's like a, a panther or something. She's just, she's taken over some type of <laughs> form. Hmm. And her face was coming right in here. How interesting. It's a whole thing we can't even understand. So she can take on this persona or this vision. Take on these forms. Oh. Forms. Is she, not not oh. so much. I don't know if it's shape shifting. Like, yeah. I was going to say, is it like shape shifting? I'm getting a yes on the shape shift. Yeah, shape shifting. Because mm -hmm. something was happening. I was getting dizzy. I'm like, somebody, somebody, something else has to come through. So, you know what? That's why she wasn't comfortable here. That's why she wasn't comfortable in her body here because that's what she is used to. She's used to changing. To being able to, to yeah, to being able, to yeah, that form. fluidity of being able to change form. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yes. Ooh, I, I wonder got if she's yeah, so happy. <laughs> right? You guys, I can't tell you that this the, is amazing. The energy she comes in with. I'm just like, this is not the shy person I was thinking I was going to be talking to. Yeah. Well, and so that it tells you too how confined that she was so, here yeah. with that, mm -hmm. all of that brought down into this just you dense know, density yeah, mm -hmm. into this little box. It it probably was so um, stifling and confining. Don says her books included shapeshifters and Tony. Oh, shapeshifter oh. happens at higher. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh well, there you go. So where we go? I was didn't know what was happening. Okay. Anything else on that? No. So <laughs> it's so exciting. I'm getting giddy. Imagine you're over there and you can be like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to be a flower and now I'm going to be a panther and now I'm going to be a, Kim a star. Would love it. Now, a tree. Know, right? <laughs> Kim, Kim is saying, sign me up right now. I'm, yes, yeah, exactly. Love that. Absolutely. So uh, she's. Absolutely. So wow, yeah, there's yeah. there's confirmation right there that the other side is fun. Mm -hmm. So it's not something to be afraid of, and it's something we don't have any idea. I mean, we're just scratching the surface of trying to understand yeah. of what's on the other yeah. side, right? We, we have no. That's why. That's why you know I talk a lot about no boxes. Can we? <laughs> it's okay to kind of use that construct to learn and wrap your mind around it, but right. open it up again because there's more. <laughs> Yeah, and just you know, forget what we've been taught. Let's open our minds and and see what we can yeah, really learn. So much more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Margarita, so yes, excited. we are magic. Yeah, we are magic. Wow, she's right on. I'll tell you that, <laughs> Octavia. Very cool person. Very cool. I have to get her books now. Yeah. yeah. Is there a story on her life? There should be. I feel like there should be a movie. I don't think so. Mm. Tell us about time here on Earth. She said she's saying um, somebody was asking about. Can she tell us about? Oh, um, Ro Roxanne. So she she's saying that everything it, from her perspective. 
everything here is confining everything here and time is one of those things that mm. everything there is is fluid and it flows and it's open and it, there's not really any edges to it and here everything has edges everything oh, is that's a good way to confining it. wow yeah yeah everything has every everything has edges oh. i'm writing that down kim yeah that's a good one okay <laughs> a good one <laughs> and as she also said that when that you're that you're right. There's nothing to be afraid of because there you're, you are fully yourself. You're fully who you really are here. You're just, you're kind of a, a fraction or, or, or a part there. You're, you're fully who you are. It's there's, it, <laughs> she's like, in a way it's scarier here because you're, you're not, you're, you're just a portion. You're, you're a part there. You're, you're full. Oh, that's awesome. It is scary to be here. Yeah. It is scary to be here. What is the most of it here? <laughs> wow. But she's, but she's saying it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's a, um, I can't get the word, uh, something. It's a, like a perspective opportunity or it's a, it's a opportunity of a type of perspective or something like that's that. That's what I was just asking. Like, why, yeah. are, why do we come here? Is it to learn? Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> she was answering you. <laughs> but I, yeah, I was trying. To, I couldn't quite get the answer. So it's, 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 I think it's a complicated answer. It's not maybe a simple yeah. answer. Yeah. We simply say we're here to learn and grow, but yeah. it, it's bigger than that. Yeah. 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 Wow. Let's take Thank you, Octavia, for yes. spending some time with us. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing lady. Yeah. That one was literally trippy. <laughs> Who? What's going on? And then I felt this <laughs> animal in my face. Wasn't my cat? <laughs> well, and that you're echo. Are you echoing? I think, yeah. <laughs> We're all echoing. It's all crazy. There's no edges. There's no edges. <laughs> We're in outer space. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you yeah. to our lovely guests and thank you, Kim and Debbie yeah. and our wonderful yeah. audience and viewers and, and they asked wonderful questions and, and that was awesome. Somebody met one of our, one of our guests tonight. I feel like I'm still yeah. in the twilight zone. Okay. Yeah, no, it kind of, yeah, it kind of feels yeah, a little it's bit gonna be a minute. If anybody, if any of you all are feeling lightheaded, uh, any of the family here watching, go ahead and put your feet on the ground, do a little stomping, yeah, drink a little water, bam, you'll be back in town. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, Chris yeah, wants to know, did you have your grandbaby? We, we haven't had the baby yet. Um, our consensus is she wants, the baby wants to be a Sagittarius, not a Scorpio. So. Uh, so Cassie is, Cassie is Sagittarius. So. There you go. So you're good. wonderful people. <laughs> awesome. So Monday, next Monday, we will be on Debbie Reaper's mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. Another awesome show. Yay. All right. All right, Bye, you guys. Everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.